Hi, uh, my name is Sylvia and I'm really excited and happy today to be joined by one of the exhibiting artists for um, the exhibition which is now open at the Herbert Gallery titled 13 Ways of Looking and the artist I'm speaking to today is Matthias Sarah Delma. Uh, Matthias, would you like to introduce, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course, Sylvia. So uh, I am. Uh, I was born in Spain, uh, but I grew up in Argentina, and uh, I was. I've been mean, been always sort of around art and art making because of basically my parents both uh, were artists. Or well, the, my mum passed away, but she, she yeah she was a she was a poet, and my dad is is a sculptor and a photog photographer. So I kind of grew up in in a house hall where there was a lot of uh, art and creativity and and being in galleries and kind of yeah both in 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 Madrid and Spain in being a little little boy in going to my my dad's uh, exhibition and my mum running a gallery and the same in Argentina and it kind of like I I kind of yeah I grew up doing stuff. I remember like one of the first things I did was to to assemble um, a radio that wasn't working anymore. So I had like kind of just the materials were there. So I, I never kind of questioned it. I think when I was late, later in my life, when I was like teenager, I then started kind of questioning, am I an artist? Am I doing art? What is this? Uh, but then it was like, it was obvious when I was like 19, 20 that I just wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. um even though my yeah my all my work throughout uh, my youth and my later later 20s been working in restaurants so yeah i've been always making art in some sort of way so yeah and i now live uh in herefordshire um uh, it's been four years since we moved to herefordshire but yeah i've been, been living around the uk for for a good 10 years so Great, great. Thanks for that, Matthias. Um, that kind of background history to to you and to why you do what you do. Um, so my first question for you is, what inspires your work? Mm -hmm. So there's there are different elements that inspire my work. I I feel like if I'm speaking at the present, what is what inspires my work at the moment is uh, is around. Um, how uh, the kind of how buildings are developed the the kind of the the step before a building is being made the kind of mess around a building site the the fluorescent colors of the construction jackets and the kind of the cones and the mess and the white and red and you know all this crazy materials they use it probably <laughs> chemical they have like really kind of shiny um, um qualities and i yeah that kind of visually inspires my my work and also i guess like being having been previously more of a, a, a painter myself um i always look at color and i look at composition so when i'm making work at the moment i'm kind of i'm using those as a sort of base for my for creating work but also i'm using more of a 3d uh, element to kind of to represent this sort of space occupation in sort of way. So like building sites suddenly appeared and they kind of take over. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's kind of one of yeah the inspirations I have. I think also being being um, brought up in a in a country like Argentina where um, the speed of life is very different from the UK and the kind of the resources as well the economic the, the economy is really bad and really um, makes people being more creative um, in in a, in a sense of how to use materials or maybe you know there's people that are taxi drivers architects uh, they do a bit of plumbery and they do their own electrics at home and they could knock up a, a wall a brick wall you know, it's like everyone is a sort of a, a, a maverick. <laughs> so you end up seeing things that are quite kind of sculpture in a way. 
without and kind of precarious. So it's quite like you know quite flexible. So I, I guess that inspired my work as well, being a bit like, oh, I could do this, I could do that, I could do a bit of electric, I could do a bit of this, I could do this. So yeah. Yeah, there's a sort of multidisciplinary nature to it all, and um, yeah, yeah, jack of yeah. all trades. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, and so um, yeah, just kind of um, adding on to what you've just shared about your kind of background, where you were born, where you've grown up. So um, you were born in Spain, raised in South America, and then, as you shared, you're now living in a more rural environment. Yeah. So how how has moving through these various spaces influenced your work and and your practice? Uh, there was a time where I focus on my painting and more. I made some work that was more around landscape, and I was really determined to kind of this is it. Um, I do not landscapes, but work inspired by landscape, and I felt like it was. If I look back, it was a time where we were living in 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 Girona near it's it's the north of Spain, so Catalonia region, and we we were living in this amazing landscape, beautiful, dry, with big mountains near near the Pyrenees, and I and I felt like the 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 landscape just was taking over me, and I was so drawn to just looking at the distance and the clouds and. So my work then was very much inspired by landscape, yeah. And now, for example, moving to this region where, yes, it's very rural. Uh, there's a lot of space. There's quite a lot of farms, and there's machinery, and getting to know farmers and kind of yeah. There's a different connection with the with the materials I'm drawn to use. The plastic. There's a lot of sort of in farmyards. They, they have they end up having like big sacks of plastic that they just burn sometimes or they just you know they or sometimes they recycle so i'm i'm looking at those materials thinking ah oh, that could be a variety for me instead of using canvas i could use this plastic mm. and then where my where, where my workshop is located now is in an industrial state which yeah that really kind of shaped my work to to kind of to this environment of quite rough, very very male sort of environment of a of industrial state where it's, you know there's all these trade states and materials you know you go to this building yard and there's like blokes there sort of smoking and kind of it's like it's quite I don't know I, I get quite influenced by where I'm working so my workshop is a total mess and it's a big space and I could just do mess and I I think I could do that because I have this space to work on I couldn't do this in if I had a little tiny room yeah, yeah. so I yeah I think that the environment really shapes shapes my my work yeah and I guess mm -hmm. there is the current environment that you're living in and then there's also the environment which you grew up in exactly yeah in the work don't they? yeah yeah i mean as i said before growing up in in argentina and having this sort of day-to-day -day life of like the mavericks yeah and the kind of you know the things last time i was there it's like i was just looking at how everything is sort of messy and they just yeah i had so much inspiration by just being there for two weeks just looking at how different and untidy everything is, and and that also is like wow, this is great material. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll use it. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's um, it's really interesting to hear that, and I guess yeah, um, the inspiration maybe from going back to Argentina versus where you live now and having this large space to actually play around yeah. with materials and create some of the work that you've created for this yeah. exhibition, for example. Um. And just moving a little bit more on and discussing a bit more about your work, you know, you talk about pushing boundaries between painting and installation um, as part of your practice and, and as part of the work that you've exhibited in 13 Ways of Looking. Uh, why why is this important to you? Um, I guess it's a, it's a personal quest of, um, of like developing my own work. I felt like I wanted to move forward from, from a painting on canvas even though I, I 
I really enjoyed doing that, but I felt like physically I I was looking to do some more work that involved more of my limbs and my 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 movement, and also I felt quite stuck on this two D uh, format. So I was I was ready in in my when I did my my university training, I was ready like stepping to the three D that I mentioned just by just to challenge my own work. So I felt like this, I, I guess, working in at the Herbert and having this big space that I really wanted to put work in. I kind of had to create work that had this sort of um, contrast with the space. So I kind of wanted to make work that kind of just took over a little bit. So yeah, the definitely moving forward to a 3D kind of has enabled me to expand more my 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 practice. Mm. I, although I'm still painting, but I'm painting on on a different format rather than canvas, say, or more the traditional way of painting. Yeah, I think yeah, you know, when people see the work, they'll definitely see that. Um, yeah, the painting and the installation sort of coming together, and I think um, even going back to some of the uh, thoughts that you said earlier around what influences you and this sort of fluorescent colours and you know materials um, in the painting element of your work that comes through mm -hmm. as well. So um, yeah, and and then you also um, when we look at your work, when we look at your practice, you can see that found objects and materials used in construction are important to your work um can you expand a bit more on that as well for us yeah i i guess i mean i i i always look for materials there on the street i feel like the it's a really good source of of materials also i feel like you know some stuff just gets you know discharged they get trash you know things that it could be reused so there's always mm. I always have like a pile of things that oh this could be for this this could be for that but I think moving that to my arts practice I, and and for this for this series of work that I, I took to the Herbert I really wanted to 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 bring this sort of Argentinian kind of being really resourceful um, kind of way to um, an object of art. I, I don't know. Being back in Argentina and seeing someone making, you know, those street cones, yeah, mm -hmm. but without a street cone, this this person just rigged up a sort of bucket that he put cement and made, you know, and he made like, and then he paint hand painted it all to to mark the space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, this is so. You know this is so alive you know why yeah why buying a, a cone you know if you can make your own yeah so and then thinking okay so and i also have this place in in near my workshop that i i have a few places where i go and take material so there's it's always this sort of hand together sort of feeling of like okay let's go and get some material and then i take them to the workshop and i i look at them and the, you know there's a there's a development of from from what I get them to, then maybe using them, maybe not, and you know, stuff just keeps moving. Or oh, you know, there's there is that, and uh, yeah, I I guess by the fact that they're being used, they also have this sort of element of of like, you know, there's a certain kind of life onto them. Mm -hmm. They have you know, even though they might be broken packets or a used piece of wood. There is, you know, there is. They come with something, so it's. Then you have a tension to work with. Yeah? yeah. Oh, this, this could be this. Oh, this, you know, what, or change the 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 kind of the total, turn it around and say, all right, maybe you know, this is a pillar that could be something else. So there, there's already a dialogue, on on, with with the material. So, yeah, and then you sort of bring that into the to the gallery, and then. And that, then you, there's another yeah, dialogue. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I guess that kind of also, um, kind of when you place the work down, I think you talked about how in, in Argentina, um, kind of make, marking a spot or sort of making a presence felt. And I think we can see that um, in, in the works, the way in which they're, they're situated throughout the gallery. Um, 
which yeah, then leads me now to my next question for you about the actual works in 13 Ways of Looking, which are placed throughout the gallery. So they're in different spaces, some outside, some in the covered court, some inside the gallery space. Um, can you tell us more about the thinking around that and why that was important? Yeah, I guess it was important um, when I went to visit the Herbert thinking about this show, I, I, I spent quite a lot of time in the courtyard thinking that something didn't work for me in there. There was, uh, there was some sort of like, it was definitely a place for transition where people come in and, you know, go to the, or the gallery or the upstairs, you know. It, was, it wasn't a place for exhibiting work in mm -hmm. such way. And the place in itself has a lot of information. So I felt like I would, I kind of wanted to put some work there just to kind of, to shake in a little bit the spectator as they come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, the gallery is the obvious play, place to show work because it's, it's, it's a kind of, it's a, having this white background is quite, you know, you're already like invited to look at the work, but having work plays in a, in a space where there's so much going on, I I I kind of I was drawn to to put work there because of that because I wanted to shake it, yeah, and um and also I I was looking at the outside space where I I have two sculptures, and and I wanted to kind of because of Coventry being a place where there's a big development undergoing at the moment and having the Drapers Hall just across the road and having this old cathedral there so there's like history there is like the new buildings popping out you know there's a whole development right next to the herbert uh, and and you know all this kind of movement and what is going to come so the kind of future and i wanted to make some work that kind of reference to this sort of you know undergoing development yeah and and in fact when you go and see it you could even see inside this sculpture mm. and see what it's made of yeah i didn't want to hide it i want to yeah. kind of make it explicit um so kind of yeah using those elements from the outside and the kind of development of the city and also i wanted to challenge the way that work is displayed in general in a gallery so one of the pieces in the gallery is a, is a painting that has a a, a leaning um, structure that is kind of is holding the painting mm -hmm. also to challenge how paintings are this but it's even like out of of uh, it's not level so it's, it's a little bit wonky so mm -hmm. I kind of yeah I wanted to shake in a little bit this kind of way of, of exhibiting work or for example painting on top of painting mm -hmm. which it was kind of like yeah I really want to put a painting over a painting that is existing, you know, just to block it as, you know, as you block a, you know, a view from a window, you know, when, you know, when a, a new building is happening. So kind of that kind of ling linguistic I wanted to use. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, we, you sort of, yeah, get a real sense of um, that the works are really in conversation with the space and, um, some ways reacting against it, some ways responding to it. And I think, um, you know, in each of the different spaces that you've talked about outside in the courtyard and in the gallery, I think they all offer something slightly different in relation to um, the areas that are important in your practice. So I think, um, yeah, the way that you, which you've created those works, I think are really um, interesting and really yeah, have have a real real dialogue with with the Herbert Gallery in in itself and Coventry as a city, which is really important, I think. Um, and so um, now I'm just going to move into my last question for you, which is, you know, where where do you see your work going next now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, what I would like to <laughs> is uh, to do work around, yeah, I guess like more commissioned work, so work that uh is specifically for a space or for a for a project um as well as making work that is just work that just without having that pressure of maybe all has to fit in this space or has to have this budget or whatever it's a bit more playful but i guess my direction or the direction i like to go 
towards is to yeah to exhibit uh, work in small galleries around Birmingham, I guess, which is kind of where lo I'm located, the nearest sort of cultural more kind of um, with the small galleries and and other art um, initiatives. Um, but yeah, I, I guess yeah, commission work I like. A large scale, I really like working large, and I, I could even work larger and have like a whole team. For example, I kind of feel like, oh, maybe you know something big's coming. I could get a whole team of, you know, people helping me make this and deliver this work, and you know, I feel like that that would be really interesting and would be really challenging as well for my practice to suddenly, you know, oh, okay, well something big you know yeah so i feel like this, i don't feel like there's a limit yeah like there's like doors that could open and yeah be, you know it's exciting to think yeah. about yeah, the possibilities and um what about in terms of the materials this working with found objects and construction materials is that something that you think is going to continue yeah i guess so i yeah i guess it's, it's in my nature to look mm -hmm. for materials <laughs> in skips uh yeah that also i feel like i like i've been collecting materials over the summer um around um because we did some work at home and there's been a lot of like lintels and kind of stuff that's inside the house that they've been removed like bricks yeah and i really want to explore the tension of this really heavy you know they're like supporting things Mm -hmm. uh with like things that are totally sort of you know paint like sort of it just vanishes so i kind of want to use this tension of like using really badly as well like i'm not a builder myself i wish i could be you know a good builder but kind of play with that and kind of create structures that are totally pointless i guess to reflect on kind of yeah on this I guess still South America is very present on on my mm -hmm. my life, you know, per, you know the precarity of how people how they live and mm -hmm. you know they prop up houses. There's been like you know fields taken in the in the during the COVID pandemic fields outside Buenos Aires where people just took a chunk of a field that belonged to someone and put a house there, and you know it doesn't belong to them, but they need a place to live so that, you know i guess that that really and also the industrialism as well you know this kind of material everywhere you know, they just chuck things and so yeah i have got a few contacts you know, trained yeah trained for that they just give materials so like, yeah they definitely will be using more of those if i can get hold of them yeah, yeah. that's yeah that's great to hear, Matthias. Thank you for yeah, kind of talking us through your practice and oh. where where you see things going next. And yeah, we'll be excited to see what what comes. What comes? Yeah. Yeah, next. Yeah, <laughs> bigger and better, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, Sylvia. Brilliant. All right. Thank All right. you so much for your time. Chat with you.